Welcome everybody. Today I am going to be sharing with you three cozy, hearty, wintry meals with you. So the first meal is a delicious creamy yogurt sauce beef stroganoff. So this recipe is a hit with my family and it is done in basically one pot except for the noodles. And so to begin with, I use some beef round steak. You can use beef tenderloin, steaks cut into pieces and make that work. And I cut that into slices and then into cubes and I cook that until it was tender. This recipe also can be done in the slow cooker. So I'll link the original recipe that I got in the description, in the description box for you. But this is my tweak on this recipe because I did alter a few things. So once that is basically cooked, I added some fresh garlic and onion. It did call for garlic powder and onion powder, but why not use the real stuff when you've got the real stuff? So then I sauteed that up with it. After that, I made sure the onions were translucent and it was fragrant. And then I put in my beef broth or water. So I used a cup of water and some mushrooms and then cook that for about five minutes. And then I added a roux with some arrowroot powder. You can use cornstarch, you can use flour, and half a cup of water to thicken up the sauce a little bit. Along with that, I had salt and pepper added in there, and you could add thyme, parsley, but I did add parsley at the end, as you'll see. I let that simmer down a little bit, and then I added one cup of yogurt. Now I used whole fat Greek yogurt, because then it will not scald. And so you wanna make sure it's a nice thick yogurt. You could substitute sour cream if you don't like Greek yogurt. You could probably even do milk if you want, just keep it on a lower heat and stir it more continually. So that really just thickened up the sauce. And while I added that, I had the noodles cooking. Now I used a whole wheat spaghetti pasta and just broke them into little pieces because that's what I had on hand. You could do like bow tie pasta, that would be really good. Elbow, um, egg noodles, you can make your own, and then it would be completely from scratch. You can omit the noodles and use potatoes. Um, my husband thought that would be a really good idea. So probably next week I'll use some of my mashed potatoes recipe that I have to make in this dish because that would be very good. So I cooked the noodles as per direction on the box and then I served that up with just some very simple steamed Brussels sprouts and with some butter, lemon pepper, and salt on there. So that was just a super delicious, hearty and filling meal that would serve for, if you wanna double it, feel free to do so. It was just very delicious, creamy, and healthy. The next recipe is a sweet potato shepherd pie. Now I have made shepherd's pie with regular potatoes, but I stocked up on sweet potatoes over the holiday season because they were very cheap and so I am using sweet potatoes for this recipe. Now with shepherd's pie you can kind of put in what you would like but I used ground beef in the recipe, so a pound of ground beef and then I added of course some onion, garlic, you gotta have those staples, salt, pepper, and then um, some green pepper, because that's what I had on hand. I was out of mushrooms, so you can add mushrooms. So I honestly just used some frozen vegetable mix that I had gotten from Aldi to throw in there as well. And then you can use tomato puree if you want, but I am using some canned tomatoes. So like a small jar of canned tomatoes would work. I made it a little bit runnier with um, my jar of tomatoes. And then I also added just some mustard to give it a little bit extra flavor. Um, you could add Worcestershire if you want. You cook it in with a little water as well just to give it that flavor. You can also add beans if you want a little extra fiber and protein. For the seasonings, I put a little chili powder in, not much because spice for my little one isn't great, but I like to have her try a little bit. And then salt and pepper, of course. Um, and then some herbs of choice, and I have rosemary on my counter, so I, of course, have to use rosemary. For the sweet potato, which I should have talked about first, I just baked that, or peeled it, um, baked it, and then pureed it with my immersion blender, or smash it with your fork if it's cooked enough, and put that on the top. Put a little salt and chili powder in that as well. 
to uh, give it the coinciding taste as the inside portion. And then in my 10 inch skillet, that is what I used. I baked this at 375 for about 30, 45 minutes. And that was super delicious. It could be served with a side of mixed veggies. Again, if you want more veggies, sauerkraut is really good with this dish. A side salad, if you want more bread, some sourdough bread. It's just a hearty meal again. My third and final dish is actually a soup, and this is a corn chowder. First of all, you fry up the bacon, and I am just using like six, seven pieces of bacon. You can use ham if you already have like a pre-cooked ham in your fridge uh, that you can cube or cut up, and then sauteed my onions and garlic, again, celery, carrots in there, um, and then I made sure to cut up my potatoes and I have a lot of potatoes still left from our garden So I used about three or four medium-sized russet potatoes peeled because um, The peel is and the skins are getting a little rough on my potatoes So after the vegetables are tender for about five minutes in your stock pot or in your Dutch oven you add the potatoes and some of the water and bay leaf for flavor. You let that simmer and cook for about eight to 10 minutes until the potatoes are tender. And you could puree this part if you want with an immersion blender. That way it's a little bit creamier texture. And then I have some frozen corn that I grew this last summer that I threw in. So that would coincide with about two and a half two and three fourths cup of corn canned, or if you have ears of corn, you can use for that. But I am using, like I said, my frozen corn. So I have about two and a half cups of a frozen corn. And then you let that cook in there for a while. And of course, don't forget to take out that bay leaf. Make sure then to add the bacon back in because that is where a lot of that flavor comes from. Make sure you have enough seasoning in there. Put that salt and pepper in there. This is good with thyme. And then you can garnish it with parsley if you like. You can immerse it again with your immersion blender or if you wanna just throw it into a food processor or a blender, make sure it's just not too hot at the time to do that. You can also sprinkle it with some cayenne pepper. This is delicious, served again with sourdough bread, with cheese and crackers, but it is a really delicious corn chowder that uses a lot of fresh ingredients, so very hearty with that potato and corn in there. And so I think these meals are going to be a staple in your house for the winter months coming up. So that is my three hearty meals for the winter that I'm sharing with you. Let me know in the comments some of your favorite winter meals that you are making this season. Love you guys. Talk with you in the next one.